On a fateful Saturday of June 22, 2024, the Kapagili community in Tamale was plunged into a state of terror and despair. The heart-wrenching disappearance of two innocent boys, Abu Bakar Abdul Latif, aged three, and Arafat Dauda, aged four, cast a dark shadow over the entire community, leaving residents gripped by fear and anxiety. Three days later, on June 25, the boys were still missing. Desperate and distraught, the parents of both children reported the case to the Domestic Violence Unit at the Police Regional Headquarters in Tamale. On Sunday, June 30, the bodies of the children were discovered in an old broken down blue black Opel Astro car on a compound that had been uninhabited for almost a year. According to residents, a cleaner inspecting the house noticed a strong odor coming from the vehicle and found the children's body nearly decomposed. I swiftly journeyed to Tamale, then to Kapagili, determined to uncover the truth behind this heart-wrenching story that had given me sleepless nights. At this point, finding the truth was all that mattered to me. Day breaks and I find myself in the home of Arafat Dauda. The parents of the deceased four-year-old are shattered and visibly distressed. Daura Ninsa. The father, Dauda Ningdo, could not speak for long without his face contorting in anguish as the shock continued to break him down. I can't talk much due to the issue. Whatever means you can use to get us justice is all we want. I am feeling so much pain. He is determined for justice to be served. We reported to the assemblyman and chief when we did not find the children. They left home in the afternoon. His mother, Mariam Al Hassan, devastated by her son's demise, couldn't utter a word. She bowed her head in sorrow. I moved to Abu Bakar Abdul Latif's house, just a few steps away from Arafat's. The atmosphere was thick with grief. The uncle of the three year old, Adam Abdul Kadir, was completely broken. This is what my plan mm -hmm. for bringing them here. I brought them because. I have vision for them, mm. and they have a future. Mm. That's the reason. Mm. And <laughs> at the last, if did not follow me mm. to where I want him. Mm. What sort of future did you want for him? That's why I sent him to school. Mm. I did not that much educated mm. because I stopped at just yesterday. Mm. So I was looking like they they will. They were above me. Mm. They will have a better education. <laughs> With tears streaming down his cheeks, he confides in me that he brought Latif and his twin brother from a remote village called Tino to provide them with a better life than he ever had. Even both of them, even the Arafats, by this time you have seen three of them here, this one, and the one gone. By this time, you have seen them here. This is, I've not been going to, to shop. By this time, they will, yes, they will be here playing. <laughs> I 
miss a lot because how they were playing here. But it's okay, please. It's okay. Look at this one. Every time he's the one playing. It's okay. Please, it's okay. So you want justice to be served? God knew how I missed them, but it's okay. As of the time of the report, he has not gathered courage to inform Latif's parents about his demise. Latif's twin brother now plays alone at home, but sometimes shows signs of missing his twin brother, whom he cannot locate at the moment. <laughs> I join him in his football play. The entire community suspected Abdul Rahman, affectionately addressed as Madaha, of potentially killing the children for a ritual purpose because the children were allegedly last seen entering his house. According to the families of both children, the often visited Madaha's house to eat. Hence the suspicion. On June 29, the chief of Kapagili, Gumana Fuseni Nayi, summoned Madaha and asked if he had any involvement in the killing of the children, but he denied it. <laughs> Such an incident has never occurred here before. Unless we please the gods and ancestors for such a thing not to recur. According to the chief, the entire compound of the palace was filled with angry residents waiting outside to confront Madaha. To manage the situation, he had to call on the police for intervention and later Madaha was taken to the police station. When they gathered here, I told the assemblyman to call the police. I then handed the suspects over to the police and I haven't gotten any update from them yet. After the bodies were discovered on Sunday, June 30, a few meters away from Madaha's home, it confirmed the resident's suspicion. In what is suspected to be a ritual killing, the decomposed bodies of the boys were found abandoned in a vehicle at the spot where I am standing. It has been told to the Northern Regional Police Headquarters. The children had been missing since June 20, 2024, and following days of frantic searching, their remains were discovered, leading to an eruption of anger and grief among the residents. At exactly this point, it has not been condoned off to show that there's some sort of investigations on the case, but you can clearly see that you can find the tie lines as well, still very much visible here, as you can rightly see in your pictures. We have been told by residents that on the Sunday evening, which was which was on June 30, 2024, uh, the police officials came in here to tow the car away and the bodies were moved to uh, the Tamale Teaching Hospital morgue. And at the moment, we are trying to find out if indeed investigations are underway or not. But clearly, on the side, you can clearly see that there's nothing sort of an investigation happening here. In response, they took martyrs into their own hands and demolished his home, burning his car in the process. Most of the residents here suspected one Alhaji to have committed a crime, which is the death of the two boys. And clearly, you can tell his abode has been raised down and the entire ceiling has been engulfed with smoke and as of that matter, it has tended to black. You can see that most parts of the walls of the building have also been brought down and the towels on the floor have also been broken. This has brought an entire fear into the residents here in Kwakayili and in as much as the case is still under investigation, this is the state of the suspect who has been alleged to have committed a crime 
looks like and we are definitely going to hear his side of the story to know if indeed what they are saying he did is something he has his hands on or not. Alhaji Hafiz and Dani is the assemblyman for Kapagieli. On the 4th of July at about 11.30 a.m. The pathologist arrived in Tamale at the Tamale Teaching Hospital, went into the autopsy room. When he started with the autopsy, he concluded around 2 p.m. on the same day. The results are out, even though I have not been formally been given, but I was given the opportunity to read through. I have written formally to them for a copy through the original police commander. I'm still waiting for a copy of mine. It suggests the death might have been a cause of due to dehydration, but all body parts were intact, no external cuts. Parts of the body tissues were taken to be taken to Accra for further tests for possible poisoning. After he was released from the police station, Madaha, I was told, has been moved to Abuabo, another community in Tamale, where he has been under protection since. I decided to look for him. When I arrived at the mosque where he has been staying to get answers regarding the accusations, tension suddenly escalated. A crowd appeared and prevented him from speaking despite his desire to explain. After waiting for an hour and a half, finally, I was informed that his lawyer has advised Madaha not to speak to TV3. On July 1, 2024, the police issued a statement saying they have proceeded with investigations into the deaths of the children. Upon visiting the police station, the regional commander declined to speak on camera but allowed me to inspect the vehicle accompanied by a CID officer. The unregistered Opel Astra car was covered with a canopy and swamped by countless flies. Footwear and a shirt belonging to the children were still inside the car and the smell was horrendous. Pictures shown me by the CID officer revealed that the bodies of the children had deteriorated to skeletons with large maggots all over them. According to the CID officer, all body parts were intact with no cats found. An autopsy result confirmed that the children may have died from dehydration or suffocation. However, when I requested a copy of the report from the police, I was directed to the police headquarters in Accra. Upon trying to find answers here, it all proved futile. The only thing that worried me was when the children were in buried. Now they are. I am quite okay. It's a really sad situation. I am in the graveyard in Tutengle where two boys who were allegedly murdered have been laid to rest. One Latif and one Arafat. The atmosphere here is and heart-wrenching as family, friends and the entire community continue to mourn this tragic loss. We will continue to follow this story seeking answers and justice for these innocent children. The graveyards, as you can see, looks really sad and it might bring tears dropping down my cheeks. Godwin Asideba, TV3 News.